Welcome to Voices of Change. I'm Katie Kapp, co-founder and executive director of the Get the Medications Right Institute, the sponsor for this podcast. On this episode, we'll be speaking with Dr. Amanda Brummel, VP Clinical Ambulatory Pharmacy Services at Fairview Health Services, where she has been employed since 1999. She's also a participant on the GTMRX Payment and Policy Solutions Workgroup. While at Fairview, Dr. Brummel has built and practiced CMM services in multiple clinic locations. She was the clinical supervisor for the MTM department, the MTM operations and program manager. Currently, Dr. Brummel has responsibility for the CMM program, the clinical development and integration of pharmacy services in the Fairview Health Network, including transitions of care approach and retail clinical services. Dr. Brummel is also an adjunct associate professor at the University of Minnesota. She has published multiple articles on CMM and pharmacy's role in the care team. She has chaired and served on multiple committees and is a current member of the Minnesota Pharmacist Association, the American Society of Health System Pharmacists, the American College of Clinical Pharmacy, and the Pharmacy Quality Alliance. Welcome to the show today, Amanda. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Well, we're glad to have you. First, let's start with a brief overview about your background. What got you into this work, and how did you get involved with the Get the Medications Right Institute? Yeah, so... Really, this work started for me, and my passion for this work started in my first year of pharmacy school. I was fortunate enough to have Dr. Linda Strand as one of my professors and was really teaching, you know, this new model of care at that time. And, you know, that passion was really lit for me. And as I uh, continued after I graduated, I really wanted to go and to be able to take care of patients in this way. and found myself at Fairview, where this practice was really being implemented and and starting within uh, their clinic settings and was able to to flourish and take off there and be able to spread this practice throughout the system. And so with the Institute, I mean, you know, this really since the inception of, of the Institute, you know, I've known about it and been involved because, again, it's right, it enhances right in the wheelhouse with comprehensive medication management and my passions for that. And have also known, you know, Dr. Terry McGinnis for uh, many years and her advocacy for comprehensive medication management. And so as a member, you know, founding member of the Institute, really, you know, again, a good fit and connection there. Yeah, and for those of our listeners, Dr. Terry McInnes is the co-founder um, and the first president of the Get the Medications Right Institute and has been a longtime champion of the value of comprehensive medication management. So, so Amanda, a lot of the work that you do uses the term MTM or medication therapy management. But as you know, at the Institute, we see the best way forward to optimize medication use is through a process of care called CMM, or Comprehensive Medication Management. For the purpose of our listeners, can you explain what the difference is between the two? I mean, is there just a difference in terminology, or is it in the process of care? Yeah, I think, you know, Hey, that's a great question, and it probably is going to vary based on who you talk to. Um, but for me, and, and in our practice at Fairview, really for us, CMM and MTM are interchangeable. And I only say that because it was a terminology when we, you know, first started our practices, CMM was not a term that was used. It actually really first started as pharmaceutical care. And then with the introduction of Medicare and Medicare Part D, MTM kind of came into that language or medication therapy management. And that's sort of what our program, and that was kind of a payer recognition piece at that point, took on its name. 
But the reality is, is when we speak of comprehensive medication management, that's really the practice that we're following. So for us, those are really synonymous. But I would say in, in general and in the market, they can have very different meanings. And I've seen them defined more to where MTM is maybe a suite of services. You might have different types of interventions and or practice models that you're doing under MTM. So, for example, CMM might be that model in, in one part of that practice. You might have targeted reviews being another one. Some even would consider some medication reconciliation services all under that MTM umbrella, you know, where CMM is really that patient care process and it's you know, doing that assessment and looking for medication therapy problems and ensuring all of the medication is appropriate, that it's effective, that it's safe, that a patient can be adherent once all of those things are set, that you are doing that, you know, care plan and, and evaluating and following up with the patient. It's really that whole big process. And I think the key word in there is comprehensive, that you're really looking at the whole person and all, everything that's going on with them, and you're not really segmenting that or targeting those interventions. And 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 you've mentioned Linda Strand before and the leadership um, around ph- the pharmaceutical care model. And as you probably recall, Amanda, she was very involved in the development of a resource guide along with Dr. Terry McGinnis through the Patient Center Primary Care Collaborative called Integrating Comprehensive Medication Management to optimize patient outcomes. And I, I think a lot of that early work also helped kind of expand both the use of the term comprehensive medication management and the adoption of the term comprehensive medication management. So for more yeah. than 20 years, the team at Minnesota-based Fairview has been refining a model to deliver comprehensive medication management services in ambulatory care clinics. And of course, you know, it's our desire through the Institute to work in team-based environments along with not only primary care, but other levels of care as well. Your experience is instructive for primary care and specialist practices alike on how a person-centered and really a more team-based approach will lead to better medication use. Several years ago, we collaborated with Dr. Terry McGinnis, who worked as the principal investigator on a report, and Fairview was featured in a 2016 report, Get the Medications Right, and then, of course, you'll be featured again as part of the Institute's Blueprint for Change. Can you outline early on how Fairview was able to not only expand the delivery of CMM-level services, but put that into practice successfully? Tell us a little bit about both how the program got started, because you were an early champion of that, and some of the challenges you faced while implementing it. Yeah, so, you know, as you stated, we have been doing this for over two decades. And so when this really was started, you have to go back to where there was no Medicare Part D, you know, services. There was really no CPT codes or a way for a pharmacist to be reimbursed unless there was kind of that, you know, incident to billing for services and, you know, really this practice was kind of in its infancy and just starting, which gave us a great, you know, lift and and ground to to make this practice and to look at our practice and, and develop it into what we wanted it to be, which was that comprehensive medication management service. And so, again, our partnership with the University of Minnesota College of Pharmacy And their work in really bringing that practice to fruition was where Fairview, in that partnership, you know, really started our practice sites. And I think early on, you know, really was able to be integrated into that care team and was really being, you know, able to be seen as a valuable team player with a role that really focused on, you know, medication management and ensuring that our patients were able to get you know, the proper medications and to get what they needed. And so some key pieces to that, though, were, I think, again, our partnership with the college, also the uh, physician and provider champions that we had. Dr. Loie Lenars was one of our main advocates. She was our medical 
director at the time for Fairview and really saw pharmacists as a part of that care team and the vision for making this practice come to life at Fairview. So it was great to have that support. We also had the support of our president of pharmacy services, Bob Beecher, and being able to, you know, take that vision and say, I see that pharmacists are going to be integrated in a different way going forward, and we really need to invest in this and to support this work and and getting that off the ground. So, you know, you can never have too many advocates in your corner, and so we were really fortunate to be able to have that. I think another probably key was that Fairview has also, you know, always tried to be a leader in providing quality care. And so, again, if you're thinking back to the environment of this time, we didn't have the sort of quality reporting, et cetera, that we do now, but still being, you know, at the forefront of thinking about how do we ensure that our patients are meeting their goals and, again, seeing the pharmacist as a key member of the team to help support that. Some challenges that you face are challenges that you likely always face with starting something new. You know, back to our early discussion on terminology and naming things, helping people really to understand what that is, helping patients to understand and see pharmacists in a different role. And, you know, what we found is they really had to experience it in order to to really understand it. And so I think there is the challenge around that of just to be able to describe and be able to show that value that way. I think there's also just, you know, challenges financially. You know, pharmacists are a valued resource, but they are an expensive resource. And again, making sure that you have that vision and long-term opportunity, again, early on when we weren't able to even consider billing for our services at that point of being able to, again, show that value statement and, and being able to to outline that well enough that the system supported that even without um, any direct reimbursement at the time. So you you, you need a CFO or someone in the financial sensibilities championing your work, and you need physicians championing your work. And I think our listeners would be very interested in, in understanding how you not only identify the physician champion, but how you nurtured and and we're able to bring other physician champions along in the evolution of your program. Yeah. So, you know, again, for us, we were fortunate that, you know, Dr. Lenard was our medical director at the time. And so was really there kind of making some of these key strategy decisions about our clinics and, you know, had background in teaching and had background in doing resident training, et cetera. And so was, used to having pharmacists as a as a part of the team or the thought of having that again diversified care team. So, you know, call it luck, whatever, I I will say there wasn't a lot that we had to do to to convince her that having pharmacists as a part of the team was something that was needed. I think from other physicians and how you continue to spread this work, it really is experience and then word of mouth that comes after that. So after you have a few key patients that you see with a physician and, you know, they can see the results of how the, the pharmacist being a part of the team impacts that, they're sold and, and they can see firsthand that benefit. And once you have a few key players that see that, they'll do the work for you, in, in my experience, of spreading the word. They're the ones that are helping to, you know, get you referrals. They're the ones that are telling their colleagues, well, hey, maybe you should, you know, send that patient to Amanda. She helped me with, you know, X, Y, Z. So I think it's it's really trying to find that key champion within your site as well and then helping, you know, letting them spread the word. Well, and you've probably heard early on the statement made by Dr. Paul Grundy, the current president of the Institute, that medication use issues are the issue of the decade. And Carrie McInnes' response to that is, 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 but we're not going to have that, the issue of the next decade. So certainly many of our listeners and, and consumers don't want to wait 20 years to move through an evolutionary process. And, and Fairview has certainly been ahead and been very much of a trailblazer in this area. Part of this, I think, is showing your value as it relates to clinical and financial outcomes. 
What can you tell our listeners about what you did in setting up the program to ensure that you did convince the financial folks that not only was this a value from a financial standpoint, but also the clinicians that it was a value from a clinical standpoint as well? What would be some tips that you might offer in that area? Yeah, and I will say I think we're we're lucky to be in a time where we are more globally thinking about value than we probably were two decades ago. So I think that that's, that's a positive as well. I think the key to really setting this up is to be mindful early on when you're starting your practices about what what is important to the organization, what can you measure, and ensuring that you do measure it. So, uh, for example, if you have certain quality measures that your system is accountable for, either via their contracts or through you know, the MIPS or MACRA program that you, you know, they are reporting out on and that there is some financial, you know, reward, incentive, et cetera, for that. You know, it's really important that if you as a pharmacist, you feel that you're making an impact on that, that you're able to measure and show the value and and the importance that you have in, in changing those metrics. So I think oftentimes, As a new practitioner, we get excited to go in. We're excited to build those relationships. We're trying to find those champions. We're setting up our practices, and sometimes our metrics are an afterthought. And we get done, and we're in the practice six months, and then someone says, well, I want to see your value, and we haven't thought about how we're going to show that because we were so excited to start taking care of patients and be a part of the team. So I would say, you know, one of the the soapboxes I get on and the things that I – try to share from our experience is just really making sure that you have something that you can measure. And, you know, I know that there can sometimes be EMR barriers or other things, but, you know, you may have to spend a little bit more time doing some things manually, but tracking it up front and or do things that aren't maybe as big of a list. Do a patient satisfaction survey, do a provider satisfaction survey. There are things out there that you can use around those areas that, you know, again, can kind of show that value and show how you're working within the team around that as you continue to advance in your program and and begin to think about um, impacting, you know, total cost of care and are you able to measure, you know, with the patient population that you saw, are you able to measure any reduction in hospitalizations or emergency department visits or readmissions? within that. So again, trying to to think about what data you have available to you and how you may be able to measure that and, you know, really just kind of set up that infrastructure from the start. Yeah, and I think, Amanda, you have the benefit of being able to evaluate this across the continuum of care and certainly capture those very important outcomes, both clinical outcomes and financial results, because you have people at, at Fairview that are moving from the hospital to other levels of care, like home care or assisted living, and then perhaps even back to home. How do you integrate comprehensive medication management services to make sure that the program that you are managing and overseeing follows the patient regardless of their level of care? I mean, what what are some of the challenges that you've encountered doing that? Uh, Because that's not easy. Right. It's not easy and it's not perfect by any means, but we've definitely leveraged the technology resources that we have. So one of the things I would say is within our EMR, we have the ability to be alerted when someone is admitted into the hospital, of course, if they're in one of our care settings. So that's not foolproof, but it is helpful so we can see and our teams can be alerted so that they know that their patient has been admitted into the hospital. We do have infrastructure that we have set up as well for when a patient is being discharged. We actually look at our population and we've set up criteria that looks at those highest risk patients and puts in a referral basically for a comprehensive medication management follow-up so that we are alerted and we can schedule very quickly. Our goal is to schedule within 72 hours of a patient being discharged, that they can have that medication um, review and discussion with their CMM pharmacist and ensure that they're, you know, all set up and on the right track at home. 
We've also done lots of education and partnership with our inpatient teams, and so our care coordination teams, but also our inpatient pharmacy teams, so that, you know, we've talked some language. We've helped explain kind of the things that we're doing on the ambulatory side so they have a better understanding of what to look at on the inpatient side and in patients that may be at risk. They're, they're the teams that are helping to drive those referrals and, and put those referrals in through that electronic format. So a lot of just reaching out and partnerships and working across teams, making sure that, you know, our outpatient care coordinators as well, that we've you know, written some medication questions into their documentation so that if they're meeting with a patient, they can ask these questions. And if there's a red flag there around medication use, that they're making sure that that patient gets to us. So just really trying to work across your teams and then to leverage what technology that you may have to just help, again, kind of keep track. And then our our patients all have access to us, and we stress this in our visits with them as well, when to get a hold of us. So all of our pharmacists have a way that, you know, voicemails and and even some old school pagers that we still, (laughs) still have that patients can leave messages on so that the patients have that direct contact and link to us so that they know how to reach us if something is going on. And I think that brings great reassurance to our patients that they know that someone is going to reach out to them if if they have something that they need. Absolutely. Uh, And, Linda, you certainly manage and have developed a shining example of comprehensive medication management across the continuum of care, and I think it's one that we're delighted that we have the opportunity for you to offer insight into how we might expand that more broadly nationally. So when you think about systems of care, from your vantage point, what are the top three things that that we need to do to get other systems of care to pique their interest in not only the clinical value of a delivery of comprehensive medication management across the continuum of care, but also the financial value of comprehensive medication management programs. I mean, I think, you know, again, sometimes some of my advice, you know, here is really just to start somewhere. So I think that sometimes, especially within health systems, people feel overwhelmed or they feel like, well, I don't have the infrastructure to do this in the way that I want to. So you know, I'm going to wait until I have that. And I I would just encourage people to step into the work. You know, we didn't start out with where we we are today either. And, but you just have to start. And so really trying to, again, get established. Are there partnerships that you can have? Are there, you know, residency programs? Are there ways to partner with others? How, how can you, again, just kind of get that ball rolling and, and get some pharmacists as, as a part of your comprehensive medication management team and ambulatory structure. So I think just kind of getting out there and, and, and getting something going and, and being mindful about where you can get the wins. So do you need to work with a specific clinic or population again to kind of get those champions and to get off the ground and be able to show some early results so that you can continue to expand this? I think the other you know, key piece with this and um, things that I talk about often is really ensuring that you have this consistent and reliable practice model, our comprehensive medication management practice that we were talking about. I think, you know, really having that stronghold and firm foundation and what we're trying to deliver and ensuring that we're doing that with fidelity within our practice is key because there really is not another healthcare professional that doesn't do that within their practices. And so, right, they they have their method of how they're taking care of a patient. We have our um, practice model of how we're taking care of a patient, and we need to make sure that we're the ones that's driving that. And I'll just give, you know, in in case I'm being too abstract with that, you know, you might have a, a provider that says to you, well, I only want you to manage their diabetes. I just need help within their diabetes. Can you help that? You know, you can absolutely, I can help you with that. And as a part of my practice, I'm going to look at all of their medications and I'm going to look at the whole patient and I'm looking at each of, you know, their conditions and each of their medications because all of that plays into how we care for their their diabetes. Um, 
So I think, again, making sure that you're owning your practice and you're owning what you're doing and you're, you have a found and firm foundation in, in what the practice is and the fidelity of the practice within that. And then I think I would reiterate just results. And when you started, well, I could talk to you forever, Amanda. We'll get you back on a podcast soon because there's so <laughs> many other things that we could discuss. But, but we're going to, we're going to wrap it up now. And I want to thank you, Dr. Brummel, for taking your time to speak with us today and offering terrific insight and and a, and a real informed perspective. Also, a big thank you for supporting and joining the important work of the Get the Medications Right Institute. Thank you, Katie. Thanks for giving me this opportunity, and I'm so happy that I can be a part of the DTMRX Institute. Well, that marks the end of this episode of Voices of Change. Thanks to our listeners for tuning in. To learn more about what you can do to help get the medications right, please visit us at gtmr.org. Until next time, be well.